The ability to learn is a gift from God, but the willingness to learn is in your hand. It's another learning day, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Again, this is your teacher Marlene, and our today's episode is how to deepen your understanding in the world of quadrilateral by solving problems involving parallelograms, trapezoid, and kite. This is the first part because I want to share more problems and how to solve it in our next video. Before we start, let me remind you some important tips in solving problems on quadrilateral like the parallelogram, trapezoid, and kite. First and very important is to read and analyze the problem carefully. Your correctness or accuracy of the result is depends upon your ability to understand the problem. Then, as much as possible, illustrate the figure and label it according to the given. This will help you visualize the problem. Then apply the appropriate information we have discussed in my previous videos like the definitions, the properties, and theorems that are applicable to the problem. Then solve it and check with accuracy in its details. So just put it in your mind and I'm very sure solving problems is very easy as 1, 2, 3. Now let us have the first problem. Quadrilateral WISH is a parallelogram. If the measure of angle W is equal to X plus 15 degrees, and the measure of angle S is equal to 2x plus 5 degrees, what are the measure of each angle of the quadrilateral? So let us draw the figure. Name as W, I, S, H. Where the measure of angle W is x plus 15. And the measure of angle S it's 2x plus 5. Now, what important concepts is needed to solve the problem? It is important for you to know it. So first, in a parallelogram, the opposite angles are congruent. And also, it is necessary to know that the consecutive angles are supplementary. Now, in this first idea, the opposite sides of parallelogram are congruent. We can equate the given angle such that the measure of angle W is equal to the measure of angle S. Then, by substitution, the measure of angle W is x plus 15, while the measure of angle S is 2x plus 5. Then, by addition property of equality, we will have x minus 2x is equal to 5 minus 15. So, x minus 2x is negative x, and 5 minus 15 is negative 10. Then, Multiplying both sides by negative 1, so the value of x is 10. Now we can find the measure of angle W by substituting 10 in x plus 15. So 10 plus 15 is 25, and this is the measure of angle W. Now let us see if we will arrive in the congruency of the opposite angles. So using the measure of angle S, which is 2x plus 5, let us substitute 10 in terms of x. So 2 times 10 is 20 plus 5 is 25. So the measure of angle S is also 25 degrees.
Now, using the idea that in a parallelogram, the consecutive angles are supplementary. Let us choose angle W and angle I as the consecutive angles. So, the measure of angle W plus the measure of angle I is equal to 180 degrees. And by substitution, the measure of angle W is 25 degrees. And by addition property of equality, the measure of angle I is equal to 180 minus 25, which is 155. So the measure of angle I is 155 degrees. Now since angle H and angle I are opposite angles, then the measure of angle H is equal to the measure of angle I. Therefore, the measure of angle H is also 155 degrees. Now, let us proceed to our second problem. Quadrilateral LIFT is a rectangle and its perimeter is 56 centimeters. If the length is 5 less than twice the width, what are the dimensions and its area? This is the illustration for the rectangle and let us name as L I F T. So these opposite sides are the lengths and these are the widths. So in the problem, the length is 5 less than twice the width. So let us represent this is our width represented as W and the length is 2W minus 5 to represent the statement 5 less than twice the width. Now, what important informations are needed to answer the problem? Yes, the idea about the perimeter, which defines us. The perimeter of any polygon is the sum of the lengths of all sides. So, the perimeter of rectangle is the sum of two lengths and two widths. So, therefore, P is equal to 2L plus 2W. Another is the idea of area which describes us the space occupied by the surface of an object. So in symbol, the area of the rectangle is length times width or A is equal to L, W. Now let us solve the problem using P is equal to 2L plus 2W. Let us substitute P as 56 and L is 2W minus 5. So simplifying, we have 56 is equal to 2 times 2W minus 5 is 4W minus 10. And let us copy plus 2W. So combining similar terms, And we have 6W is equal to 66. And dividing both sides by 6, so we have the width is 11 centimeters. Then let us substitute this in L is equal to 2W minus 5 to find the length. So L is equal to 2 times 11 minus 5. And 2 times 11 is 22 minus 5 is 17. So the length is 17 centimeters. So the required dimensions of the rectangle are the width is equal to 11 centimeters and 
the length is 17 centimeters. So to find the area using length times width, the area is equal to 17 times 11. And that is 187. So the area is 187 square centimeters. Now let me give you another problem. Quadrilateral MNOP is a square. If side MN is represented as PX plus 6 and MP is equal to 4X minus 4, then find the area and the length of the diagonal. So let us have our illustration. The square is named as MNOP. Let us draw our diagonal MO and diagonal PN. Now, what important information are necessary to solve the problem? Okay, the sides of the square are congruent. So, we can say that side MN is equal to side NO and is equal to side PO and also equal to side MP. Another idea is about the area. So, similar to rectangle, if we're going to use the idea in multiplying the length and width, but in the square, since the sides are congruent and is represented as S for the side, we can find the area of the square as the square of the side. Then, the diagonal is the same as the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So, we are going to use the idea of the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, the idea is complete. Let us solve now. Now, using the first idea that the sides of the square are congruent, we can use MN is equal to MP. So, by substitution, side MN is represented as 3X plus 6 while side MP is represented as 4x minus 4. By addition property of equality, we have 3x minus 4x is equal to negative 4 minus 6. Combining terms, we will get negative x is equal to negative 10. Multiplying both sides by negative 1, so we will get x is equal to 10. Now, since the value of x is 10, let us substitute to find side mn. So, that is 3 times 10 is 30 plus 6, we will get 36. On side mp, we have 4 times 10 is equal to 40, then minus 4, so MP is equal to 36. Therefore, all the four sides, such as MN, side MP, side NO, and side PO are all equal to 36. Now, to find the area, which is the square of the side, so using the symbol, A is equal to S squared. Substituting the obtained value for the side, which is 36, and the square of 36 is 1,296. So, the area is 1,296 square units.
Now, to find the diagonal, observe that it divides the square into two right triangles. So, the diagonal is the same as the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Therefore, we can use the idea of the Pythagorean theorem, which tells us that the sum of the square of the two legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Now, since we are solving for C, then C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. Then, substituting the length of the sides, which are both 36 units, then to avoid large numbers, we can combine them as the square root of 2 times the square of 36. And the square root of the square of 36 is 36. So the value of C is 36 square root of 2 units or that is approximately around 50.9 units. Well, let me stop for a while. I will continue discussing more problems in our next video lesson. So remember, solving problems makes you a wiser person. So don't let problems defeat you. You have all the talents and wisdom to solve it. So before I end this video, how well do you know about this question? In solving geometry-related problems, which of the following is the least necessary? Is it L, the illustration, U, using calculator, or V, the information on the figure? Write the letter of your answer in the comment section and we will see the lucky person. Again, thank you for watching. God bless everyone.